Yeah, so this week I wanted to talk about the coop, as in the chicken coop. Go over a few of the features, how we did it, how long it took, how much it cost, blah blah blah. Actually, what other coop would there be? I don't, that's random. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Um, thought today I'd do a bit of DIY. Well, actually, I'm not gonna actually be doing DIY on film because I get a bit ugly when I'm building. But what I thought I would do is show you some stuff I have built. As you know, Dee and I have been trying to build here. and it hasn't been going so easily because of resource consents building consents and just because it's the most hardest thing to do in Auckland is to try and build so in the interim we thought there's no point in doing nothing we might as well see what else what something just happened so, I might as well pick a project I can do on the land that's not really going to affect it. So, I came up with this. The chicken coop. Because who doesn't want fresh eggs in the morning? Okay. So... Before I get going, I, I'll, I'll take it right back to the beginning. A little bit of backstory around my whole chicken life. I'm not a crazy chicken lady, but I feel like I'm getting close to it. I'd been checking out on the internet about permaculture and I was getting really interested in it and I came across this guy called Justin Rhodes. Not the X Factor singer. No, not X Factor. I think he's American Idol. I don't know. Anyways, not him. This is a dude who lives in the middle of... Actually, I don't even know where he lives. He lives in Australia. Um, no, not Australia. He lives in America. Um, his link's below, but he's freaking amazing, and you should check him out. The dude's a legend when it comes to permaculture, in particular chickens, and he's kind of like the guru that I based most of my stuff off. He had produced this documentary called Permaculture Chicken, which was crowdfunded anyways I was totally hooked on his YouTube channel because he was a guy who really didn't know much about anything much like myself when I started this journey and he had gone to do his permaculture certificate in Australia with some of the founding permaculturalists and anyways he took those principles back to his homestead in America and the first thing he decided to kick off with was bloody chickens and I thought this is the guy to follow. So anyhow, he's the one who got me onto chickens and um, I, don't, I guess I just haven't looked back. The only tough thing was that he's obviously based in America so they're in completely different seasons, they have completely different things that they have to deal with and so some of the stuff that he does I didn't do but you should totally check him out and he's done this whole tour around America visiting different types of farms and and seeing what other people are doing in their journey so really cool guy um, and you should check him out I think I've told you to check him out quite a lot he's not paying me to say this by the way so at the same time my auntie was trying to get rid of her chickens and so she was like do you want my chickens of course this Māori was like free stuff a oh, hell of yes i wrangled my boyfriend to come with me and we went on this mission of chasing chickens around her yard let me tell you catching chickens is not easy especially when they don't want to be caught um but i ended up with about six or seven chickens which were supposedly hens turns out only like three or four of them were uh that's a different story. I finally had them all in these boxes and I brought them back to Grace Church Drive. I had the coop ready to go. I would say that this coop took me about, I don't know, 
20 hours to build keeping in mind I'm I'm not really a professional builder and also that I was just doing this every sort of afternoon after work and in the weekends when I had spare moments and I also did this without electric tools so it was like hand saws and stuff like that very freaking painful well if I'm honest it didn't actually follow a plan like every good Kiwi I winged it the reason I didn't use a particular plan was because I knew I was going to be using recycled materials. So you know you kind of have to just go with the flow. Yeah, there, was a, there was a few things that I absolutely knew that I wanted to incorporate into my design. I just didn't know how I was going to go about it until the materials came to my hands. So the first thing I wanted was for the coupe to be mobile. That was like... 100% the number one thing I wanted and that's just because we're still in the throes of building well not in the throes we haven't even started building and because of that we're going to need to be able to move that coop. I didn't want to be plonking the coop somewhere where it was going to be just in the way so I knew that it had to be mobile for that reason. The second reason was for the long term aspects of it I wanted to be able to use the chickens as part of my permaculture design meaning that I really saw them as something as oh hi wolf yeah everyone knows you there and so I have this vision where I want to be able to move the chickens down the plots and get them to do all of the tilling, fertilising and prepping of the soil so that I can leave it for a little bit and when the next crop rotation is ready to go in, they should have prepared it for me so I don't need to do it myself saves me a job to do. The second feature that I wanted to make sure I nailed was that it was easy to clean. So with those two things in mind, I started looking for materials. Now with my coop, predominantly it's all done using recycled materials. So I, I sourced it from a whole number of places and I guess it's a bit of a rub because it means you can't exactly copy everything that I've done but I'm pretty sure if I can find these sorts of materials then you could as well. Every local area has some sort of demo yard or building going on where you can sort of go dumpster diving and see what they've got in their bins. Let me tell you the stuff that people throw out is ridiculous ridiculous and people need to learn how to recycle and reuse and reduce where they can. Anyhow, so for me the main framework was actually an old fence also from pellets. So I live near East Tamaki which is a massive industrial sort of area and forever you're finding pallets put out onto the side of the road for people to clear so I totally took advantage of that and probably over a couple of weekends was collecting up enough pallets to sink a small battleship. Hot tip if you're trying to dismantle pallets a good thing to do is actually wet the material so leave it out in the rain or something like that and then the nails just pop out so easy. So Ormiston, which is the suburb just nearest to us, is earmarked to be one of Auckland's biggest suburbs by I think 2025, something like that. It's going to house like hundreds of thousands of people, but as a result there is some crazy development going on around there. And with every development there is a ton of wood that is being cast out. Now they can't use it because it's short lengths and you can't exactly make frames out of that but for chicken coops I mean perfect. So I got a lot of the plywood that I used on the walls um, and just like short runs for nogging or that sort of stuff. The tin roofing I was really lucky one of our family friends was dismantling their old shed so I pretty much yoinked all of their tin. I also used old blinds and some old shutters from 
I think it was like windows or something like that and they were just sitting in our junk pile of crap down the back my mum's like a hoarder I thought it was a really good incorporation because it allows that whole ventilation flow through the coop so it doesn't get stinky also used a lot of core flute especially in the beginning because I wasn't 100% that my design was going to work so I just did semi-permanent walls and the core flute was a perfect answer to that because it's really easy to cut up you know you just need to sort of staple it onto the walls temporarily and all I did was pop down to a local real estate agent down the road and just say hey if you have any old signs but I totally want them and they just gave me a crap ton of them and to be honest I use these core flute boards so much so they really come in handy I know it's plastic but what else would it have been used for so for me I feel like it's kind of okay and probably the most key recyclable item I used was a boat trailer again pretty lucky because back way back when my uncle had bought this old catamaran with hopes and dreams of setting it up to be this grand boat that sailed on the ocean uh, but he bought it left it at our house and 20 years later it was still sitting down our back so I thought stuff it I'm gonna steal your trailer so that's what I used to make my coop movable and I obviously realised that not everyone's going to have a boat trailer sitting in their backyard but I did a little bit of research and actually there's a lot of people trying to get rid of old boat trailers that are just rotting away in their backyards and you can like pick them up for a pretty penny so uh, not as uncommon as you think it saves you from actually having to get wheel axes and tyres and all that sort of stuff so I say just use the resources you have instead of going out and buying all this stuff probably the key things that I did buy were stuff like nails hinges um, what else oh the chicken guard which I'll tell you about in the feature section because that is just like my life so I would say all up minus the chicken guard I spent maybe like 10 bucks 10 or 15 dollars I don't know something ridiculous like that <laughs> So starting off with perches, I went with the popular consensus online which was that if you put your perches on an equal level that it mitigates that issue of fighting and actually it worked, all of the chickens kind of jumped in they sorted their crap out and they were all happy to sit on the same level as each other. Nest boxes hinge them from the back. They're easy clean, easy to grab your eggs and easy to pull hens out of as well. I went with the traditional wood floor. It doesn't make it very easy for cleaning so what I did was I incorporated a sliding floor. The floor literally um, comes out of the coop so that you can just like sweep it off and drop all the crap off, hose it off if you need to. Ventilation, not only just for the hygiene thing, but actually it really comes in handy to be able to peek into the coop to see what's happening in there without, you know, having to open doors. The whole wall panel can be pulled out for easy access for cleaning, allowing the floor to slide out and also perches to be removed as they sit on easy unhook cradles. The last feature I'll probably share with you is the chicken guard. Now I didn't get this immediately, it was never my plan, in fact I never knew it existed until there was a need to know that it existed. And basically what it is, is a little contraption that opens and shuts the door. Now peoples, you're not going to understand the amazingness that that is until you spent six months waking up at the crack of dawn to let your chickens out and trudging down in the freezing cold of a winter to close the door so that cats and predators, not that there's many in New Zealand, but 
anyways whoever can get into your chickens at night it's really basically just a menu and an up and down button and it's got like a little railing system down here and it slides up and down now you can set it a few ways you can either do it by sensor so it senses when the sun is setting and rising or you can do it by timer so specifically put in certain times that you want it to open and close. In New Zealand's weather with driving wet rains it does leave the panel a little exposed but I believe they've got a more robust casing now so let me tell you if you don't have one it will change your life. I totally recommend it. It is amazing. Okay that's all you need to know about my coop. Well that's all I've got to tell you anyways. I could go on for hours about this subject but I won't because you know we don't want you falling asleep more than you already are right now. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions hit me in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you. Oh, oh, oh,